Good Sunday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick weather check as to what's going on for this evening. The good news is that it looks like things have improved significantly as we are looking at less chances of severe weather for tonight. But unfortunately, that we can't rule that out as we go into tomorrow. Matter of fact, what could be a pretty significant severe weather threat will be existing just to our east, and that again will be happening as we go into Monday. Monday morning and into around early Monday afternoon just west of the Mid-South area. So if you have any plans for outdoors, we'll show you where we're going to be expecting that coming up here in just a little bit. If you're just joining us, if you've never joined us before, welcome to the show. We'll catch you up to date on what's going on in and around the Mid-South area where it comes to your forecast. So stick around for that here in just a little bit. Some more chances of rainfall out across much of the area as we go throughout the rest of the evening and unfortunately right on into about daybreak tomorrow so stick around for more information about that still pretty hazy out there again a little bit of dust in the atmosphere and also mixed in with a lot more moisture starting to make their way on through if you've never joined us before forecast at the bottom of your screen scrolling along in the blue section you can also catch our forecast our seven day forecast available at wreg.com slash weather and any questions or anything else you'd like to communicate again austin.onic at wreg.com view from 240 and airways looking back toward memphis international and and again, kind of hazy out there for this evening. Got some decent amounts of dust plowing on through the atmosphere, but mainly light rain showers showing up into and around this area, around Memphis International. But the important thing is this icon right here, showing delays of 15 minutes or less and little, if anything, in the way of major problems at connecting airports across the continental United States. So looking pretty good across the area for there. Welcome to everybody who's joining us for this evening. East Memphis, Cameron McNeil, dreary, cloudy, and cool. Thank you very much for the weather report there. And for everybody else checking on through, William Boykin, glad you're enjoying the forecast for tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, Brandy Merriman, super worried about tornadoes. We'll take a look at the severe weather forecast coming up here in just a little bit, but doesn't look quite as bad as anything in the way of major problems. Kimberly Fryer, Lamar, Mississippi, no bad weather, please. And we'll see what we can do about that one. Uh, Hillary M. Emerson, tomorrow at 5.30 for soccer practice. We'll take a look at that uh, as well. Scott Bullard, any chance for tornadoes? Doesn't look like it right now, but uh, close enough to us to watch out for very carefully. 59.4 in... Let me see. Crenshaw, Mississippi with light winds. Okay, two-point typeface on Facebook and... Bifocals don't really work too well here. Cool and cloudy and gilt edge. Sandy Sweatman Brunson. Thank you very much on that. View from our Shelby Farms Park camera. Hyde Lake and looking back toward the area around... Close a little fuzzy right now, but Farm Road and Walnut Grove, that intersection right there, again, showing some traffic out there. Not doing too bad on traffic for tonight. Things are actually pretty light, and that includes right around 240 in Poplar as we have little, if anything, in the way of major slowdowns. A pretty light traffic night for much of the Mid-South. We're not seeing any other problems with travel across much of the area at this point in time. Uh, high winds in Pojack, hope I'm saying that. New Mexico took out the shed with the wind. From Chacon Chavez, hope I'm saying that correctly, and thanks for joining us. Vince Tetuan, my fellow classmate from Topeka West High School, welcome to the show. Thanks for stopping on by. Horn Lake, good for now. Sherry Gaines Martin, thank you very much. Kai Blair, did I say tornadoes? Yes, but not quite. Not exactly the major thing out there. Gina Bumpus, can I leave the windows open tonight? Uh, legally, I can't do anything on the way of advising you one direction or the other. I can give you the forecast. I can give you weather information, but I cannot recommend anything in the way of personal action, so sorry about that. Uh, East Memphis, Lindy Walker Bumpus, welcome to the show. And by Halia, hope all bad weather stays away. Jessica Tapia, hope I'm saying that right for right now. Let's uh, see, more cool weather. Cora Jones, we can get you set up with that one coming up here in just a little bit. Showers on Storm Tracker 3S, not much in North Mississippi or West Tennessee, but the line of showers starting to cross the river and heading in from eastern Arkansas. We don't have, again, anything in the way of severe weather, and so far, and 
crossing our fingers. So far, it does not look like anything major taking place in the way of severe weather as the forecast has really changed in just about the last 12 hours or so for the better. So we are looking at that. Again, heaviest showers just north and west of West Memphis, moving up to around the I-55, I-555 junction between there and Jonesboro. So some wet travel around portions of the Mid-South. So definitely want to allow for some little bit of extra time to get to where you're going just in case. Most of the rain along and north of I-55, or I-40, I should say, and crossing I-55 at this time. And down to the south of that, North Mississippi, southeast Arkansas, not getting a lot south of the metro area, although we are going to continue to see some light chances of scattered showers out and across the Mid-South. Pete Trussell, spring just around the corner, starting on Tuesday, as a matter of fact. Correct on that one. Thank you very much. Rain overnight in Mount Pleasant. Gina Bumpus, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, Jennifer Jones, anything heading to Lakeland? Well, outside of showers, not really too much of anything uh, for right now at this time. Fort Lupton, Colorado. Karen Cook, thanks for checking in uh, from out west. And Bozo Wolfolk, thanks a lot for checking in a little bit nearer by. Some thunderstorms back off toward around Little Rock earlier this evening. Most of those have fallen apart. A few areas of thunderstorms, you can see a few lightning markers around Galloway and just to the west of West Memphis every once in a while in the last couple of hours. But beyond that, not a lot going on at this time when it comes to rainfall. Some severe weather down to our south. What's left of a severe thunderstorm watch for parts of East Central Texas and just to the west of Louisiana, and most of that's in effect until about 11 o'clock tonight, but as you can see, well away from the News Channel 3 viewing area, so definitely good news there. Temperatures across the Mid-South looking pretty good back in the mid to upper 40s to lower 50s, and going to be a mild day coming up tomorrow as those winds turn back around out of the south, giving us some fairly nice conditions out there. Before tonight, decently chilly and breezy. We've got some wind chills of around the upper 30s close to Blytheville at the airport. 49 degrees, 10 mile per hour winds. That's decently brisk in parts of the area so far. All right, let's run the numbers and give you an idea as to what we're looking for into the overnight period. I still think we're going to be seeing more chances of showers and thunderstorms the farther we go toward Monday morning. The good news at this time, again from the Storm Prediction Center, the threat has really reduced, but we are still going to be keeping a very close eye on what goes on with all of this. Temperatures remain relatively steady into tomorrow morning, and those isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms will remain in the Mid-South right as we get into rush hour tomorrow with Todd Demers back on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Now, again, what we're looking for for tomorrow, round about late in the morning and early into the afternoon going through the Mid-South, Decent impulse of energy coming through here, which is going to, again, stir up the atmosphere by just a bit and give us some more possibilities of thunderstorms out there. Now, this particular latest portion of that last storm system looks like it's going to be heading into Middle Tennessee and northern Alabama. And this one tomorrow morning, late into tomorrow afternoon, could clip the Mid-South with some thunderstorms capable of producing some severe conditions into Monday late morning, early into around tomorrow afternoon. So we're going to be uh, watching out into and around the area for right now. Uh, Andrea Sheldon Hunter, rain at 1 a.m. in Clarksville, another surprise storm. Not exactly a surprise at this point in time, but it looks like uh, any chance over the Mid-South area for tonight will be a good chance of showers and thunderstorms overnight into rush hour tomorrow morning. So wish we could kind of rule that out, but it doesn't really look like we're going to be seeing that again. Doris Ann Campbell looking for rain heading south toward Atlanta. S uh, safe travels to you. C. Denise Martin from Blytheville, Arkansas, rain in that direction. Direction. Uh, Decatur, Ruth, Ruth Wil Wilhoyt Rogel, uh, living in Decaturville. What about Decatur County? Yeah, unfortunately, more chances of showers and thunderstorms out in that particular area as we go into tomorrow. Now, toward tomorrow afternoon, the main threat shifts well to the east of the Mid-South area, and we shouldn't see much of anything left over of this for Monday evening as we get some drier air to temporarily move our direction. But on Tuesday evening, we'll be looking for more potential of showers and thunderstorms heading back our direction. Okay, really good news. Again, this is the latest update. Came in about 15, 20 minutes ago from the Storm Prediction Center, so this is about as updated as you can possibly get for right now. Uh, these forecasts come out every several several hours. They're not issued one on top of another every few minutes because the atmosphere doesn't change that quickly. So we do need to see again 
about a change on this. This will be updated around about midnight or so, and we'll keep our eyes on that. If it needs to be updated again on social media for anything affecting the Mid-South, we'll let you know about that. But for right now, the best possibility of anything going on is going to be in the slight risk category from the Florida Panhandle back to about Houston and Galveston, that slight risk yellow category there. And it looks like a big chunk has been taken out of that marginal threat category, although it does bring some of that marginal threat just to the borders of the Mid-South area right along western parts of St. Francis, Lee, and into around Phillips County in Arkansas. That's for tonight. So again, I would not be surprised to hear some rumbles of thunder out there, but it looks like for all intents and purposes that the main threat for severe weather has been basically for all intents and purposes, removed from the area. Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to be seeing an isolated, stronger thunderstorm, but right now, this is looking a lot better than what it was just early this morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak, so some very good news about that. Not so good news as we go into tomorrow. Big bullseye of an enhanced threat of severe weather, Middle Tennessee, northern Alabama, northwestern Georgia, and that gets pretty close to the Mid-South area. The Tennessee River has a slight risk of severe weather, decently high and a little bit less as you go a little bit farther west of that for the metro area. Main threat for us, damaging winds, large hail, possibility of isolated tornadoes out there. But the main threat at this time looks like it's going to be kind of heading its way to the northeast, picking up steam overnight as it wraps around that low pressure area. And this is going to be the main area for where we're going to be seeing severe weather just outside the News Channel 3 viewing area. But it looks like we could get clipped by some of that in West Tennessee and North Mississippi as we go into around uh, tomorrow. So definitely want to pay attention to what's going on with the weather. Of course, Todd Demers will have an update on the threat for severe weather coming up bright and early tomorrow morning, and I'll be keeping an eye on this overnight as necessary to see if there's anything heading our way. But if you're heading towards, say, Nashville, Franklin, Columbia, even around the area close to around uh, Crossville and Cookville, anything east of Jackson and down toward around, say, Birmingham, north of Montgomery, you're going to be seeing that potential for a strong outbreak tomorrow of severe weather, and that will include the possibility of some strong tornadoes out there. Again, cannot rule that out, but so far the bullseye is staying just east of us, which is good news for us, but unfortunately we do need to watch that if that potential be, decides to shift a little bit back closer to the west, and that could be very important for tomorrow. So definitely want to pay attention to what's going on out there with the weather in about the next 24 hours. Pope, Mississippi, Jeffrey Griffiths, welcome to the show. Partly cloudy. Thanks for the report out there at this point in time. Rest of the forecast, last day of winter is tomorrow, and temperatures will be nowhere near winter-like. Matter of fact, very spring-like with showers and thunderstorms out there. Rain and whatever thunder we have left over should be basically over with by dinner time into tomorrow. And then for the first day of spring, it's going to be feeling a lot colder out there. Highs only back in the lower 50s. So some much colder conditions out across the Mid-South, including a chilly start to the school bus for the kids who, again, are back from spring break once again back to the classroom. A little warmer, a little bit more sunshine on Wednesday, and then over the course of the rest of the next couple of days, we see again some much warmer conditions all the way toward next weekend, but unfortunately we've got that isolated chance of some showers and thunderstorms coming into and around the area for right now. Scott Jarvis putting in a lot of hours. Uh, no question about that. This has been my normal schedule for the last 20 years and uh, one, two, three months or so. So pretty well used to it by now. And yes, the coffee is helping. So thank you very much. Blue Springs, Mississippi. Ruth McGee, thanks for uh, tuning in. And Matt Kane, the warmer the better. We're getting closer to those really warm days coming up. We're cooling off again a little bit at the early portion of this week, but a little bit on the milder side as we go toward next weekend. And isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms Friday late into Saturday early, and then by next Tuesday and Wednesday, another chance of some showers coming on through. Now, there have been some signs a little bit toward about this period of time, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, that we could be looking at something stronger. But unfortunately, some of the computer models are saying it's really good for the possibility of something very active, and a lot of the other computer models are saying kind of, meh, not really. So we're going to be watching this with a lot of interest to see what comes our way next week. Again, 10 days 
days out is a long way, so things will be changing over the next couple of days at least. So definitely want to stay tuned as this event gets a little bit closer to us. All right, for the next couple of days, again, your opportunity to get more where it comes to information about how you can protect you and your friends, your loved ones, your community, your place of worship, your business, your school, anything like that. These meetings are called Skywarn Volunteer Training Classes taught by the National Weather Service personnel at Memphis, and they're going to be held all over the Mid-South. The final about seven or eight meetings are lined up and ready to go, including the one for Memphis and Shelby County. The next one will be tomorrow, March 19th in Trenton, Tennessee. This Tuesday, one after that in Calhoun City, Mississippi. Monday next around the area of Dyersburg, Tennessee. And Tuesday, March 27th at Lord of Life Lutheran Church on Poplar Pike in Memphis for Memphis and Shelby County. These meetings last about an hour, hour and a half. Should be able to attend one that is nearby. If you have any questions, you can always contact the National Weather Service, and we'll also be posting this information here on our weather page. Just scroll down beneath the forecast, and you'll catch the information about where this stuff is going on. I urge everyone to think about taking this course. It's a great opportunity to learn more about what goes on with severe weather before, during, and after. What you report back, you as a volunteer spotter, can get information out to the public because what you see on the ground, you relay that to the National Weather Service in Memphis, who relays it to law enforcement, the hospital and health care system, uh, the school districts out across the Mid-South, and most importantly to people like yours truly and the colleagues that we work with here so we can tell everybody in the Mid-South what's going on and more importantly what may be coming your direction. So if you're in Olive Branch and you see a developing tornado, a wall cloud rotating on through, you can tell them that it's moving northeast at 40 miles per hour. So if you're up around Germantown, Collierville, Rossville, you're in the path of that storm and here's what's coming your way. That information can help save lives. So please consider becoming a Skywarn spotter. Usually I've seen kids about maybe eight or nine years old and older take the course, but for kids who can become paralyzed by fear, very anxious about severe weather, these are great opportunities for them to get a hold on what feels like a massively uncontrolled situation. So it's your opportunity to kind of help out in tune around the area for keeping an eye on severe weather into the Mid-South area for right now. Uh, Leanne Adams heard earlier the severe weather was going to be well to the east of the Memphis and the southern parts of the area. Uh, just the same as earlier today, just tuning in. Uh, again, for those of you who may just be tuning in, thanks for checking in. But as of right now, the main threat for tonight is well removed from our area, well on down to the south of us, so it's looking a lot better. Our threat for severe weather is going to be barely marginable at this time. We have the possibility of a few thunderstorms taking place here, but then into this bright green shady category, that's the marginal threat, and again, just outside the viewing area for later on tonight into very early tomorrow morning. But as we go into tomorrow, and again, you may have just seen this, just to the east of the Mid-South area, Middle Tennessee, northern parts of Alabama, we're looking at an enhanced risk of severe weather, largest risk, strongest risk we have seen in quite some time. And that's basically from the Tennessee River back toward the east into Middle Tennessee and northern Mississippi into the Mid-South itself. Eastern Arkansas, not quite so much. But West Tennessee and northern Mississippi will stand anything in the way of the greater chance here. We're going to be very close to this. Yes, technically this may be outside the News Channel 3 viewing area counties, but this is close enough to us to make us sit up and take notice to say, we really need to be ready for this, especially if you're around the area from, say, Dyersburg, Jackson, Corinth, Ripley, Mississippi, Oxford, back down to around Bolivar, and upwards of around Brownsville, anywhere in that area, anything east of the metro and across northeastern Mississippi, that's where I would be watching this with a lot of interest, and just about any place else in the Mid-South, so we can, again, get to see the possibility of this thunderstorm possibility out there into the course of the rest of the forecast. Getting into the rest of everything, again, you've already seen pretty much all the details, again, for right now. 
Now we'll have more on that coming up a little bit later on tonight. Again, spotter training. I would urge everybody to take this as as often as possible when it's offered. And the one for Memphis has been issued. And again, that'll be coming up March the 27th. You can catch my forecast throughout the rest of the weekend on Country 92.5, Oldies 102.3. And I'll be on with Bob and Josh coming up tomorrow morning, bright and early. We should have enough time tonight to do a little bit more about weather where the troops are. If you have friends, loved ones, or relatives serving in the United States military, We'll show you a little bit more about what it looks like around the world where people may be serving. And, of course, we'll update you on what's going on with the forecast here. That'll be in about 10 minutes on my Facebook page, Periscope, and Twitter coming up here in just a bit. Stay tuned for all the updates tonight on the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10. We'll be on the air at about 1037, thanks to the NCAA tournament running behind by just a little bit. So we'll bring you the latest weather information there. Mike Sadie has a busy day in sports, and Jessica Gertler has all the day's news, and that'll get Again, be coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10 on the late edition. Thanks to everybody for joining us. Again, questions, concerns, ideas, email me at austin.onic at wreg.com, and you can contact all of us in the weather experts office here at wreg.com slash weather. Join us tonight on News Channel 3 at 10 for a complete update of all the day's news, weather, and sports on News Channel 3. Hope everybody had a great weekend, and hope you have a safe week coming up.